Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Spa. One of the potential methods of rejuvenation is through reprogramming of cells using the Amanaka factors. This is the technique that Dr. Sinclair used when he restored the eyesight of mice. A new paper just released looked at the systemic effects of long-term partial reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors. I would like to thank Adam for suggesting this paper to us. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper, In Vivo Partial Reprogramming Alters Age-Associated Molecular Changes During Physiological Aging in Mice. One of the authors was Dr. Juan Carlos Belmonte, who did the original in vivo reprogramming experiments. Another is Dr. Steve Horvath. The partial reprogramming is based on the use of the four Yamanaka factors, OCT4, SOX2, KLF4, and CMEC. Over short periods of time, these have been shown to restore youthful epigenetic profiles to aging cells and extend life in prematurely aging mice. However, long-term reprogramming has not been investigated. So in this study, they looked at long-term in vivo reprogramming. They found that the process led to rejuvenating effects in skin and kidney and in the blood, and it was dependent on the length of the reprogramming. They saw a reversion of the epigenetic clocks, as well as the metabolome, including a reduction in senescence and inflammation. And the conclusion was that the protocol was safe and effective in preventing age-related physiological changes and that long-term reprogramming was more effective. A little background on the Yamanaka factors. These are four proteins which, when expressed in a cell, have the ability to take it back to being a pluripotent stem cell. However, when this is being done in vivo, we don't want to go back to being a stem cell as the cell will then lose its identity. We want it to remain the same type of cell, but become younger. So for long-term reprogramming, there were two related concerns. One is that the cell will lose its identity, and the other, that it will become cancerous. Here are the protocols and groups that they used in the study. The mice were naturally aging, but they were genetically modified, so they would express the Yamanaka factors in the presence of doxycycline, but not when it was absent. So in this way, it was possible to turn on and off the expression of the Yamanaka factors. In this study, they used a cycle where the genes were on for two days and then off for five. They used C57BL6 mice, a common strain used in studies. Some were wild type, shown as B6, while those with the genetic change to be responsive to doxycycline are shown as 4F. They had four groups of controls who were untreated. And the four treated groups, which started at 12 months, 15 months, and 25 months, with respectively 10 months, 7 months, and 1 month of treatment. For the human equivalent, 12 months is around 58. So the mice were middle-aged and the treatment was continued for a long time. In the study, they looked at methylation clock, transcriptome, metabolome, fats, and the structure of the tissue from the spleen, liver, skin, kidney, lung, and skeletal muscle. The first thing they checked for was safety. As explained earlier, there was a concern for the increase in cancer when partial reprogramming was continued over a long period. In this study, they did not see any sign of ill effects in the reprogrammed group. They looked at the epigenetic clock of the various tissues. These results are from the group that were on the treatment for seven months, from month 15 to 22. They also tested the group after one month, but none of their results were significant. They found that the kidney and skin did see a significant reduction in the epigenetic age, where the results are given as the age acceleration, a ratio of the chronological age to that of the biological age. And we can see here that their p-values were less than 0.05. They looked for changes in the gene expression in the same group of mice. They saw that some of the gene expressions changed in the tissues. The largest changes were in the skin and kidney, where we can see the two sets of dots are separated. Looking at the gene expression specific to inflammation and the generation of SASP, we can see that the mice which had had the doxycycline treatment had much lower values, shown in blue, than the ones without. 
they tested recovery from injury in the skin and muscle. They did see increased proliferative capacity, shown here by the expression of KI67 protein, where the treated animals were closer to that of the young control. Although the wound did not close any faster than the control, there was less fibrosis in the wound shown by the lower collagen percentage area. Wounds in muscle did not seem to see any improved healing. And finally, looking at the metabolic and lipid profile in the blood, which shows a more systemic effect. They saw that in the 22-month-old mice, there was a significant difference between those who were treated and those who were not, with the treatment looking more like the three-month-old mice. One of the key findings was that the procedure of long-term partial reprogramming had no obvious adverse effects. And the benefits that they saw took time to appear. The one-month treatment for the 25-month-old mice did not have the same results. And their final conclusion was that partial reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors may be a way to rejuvenate organisms and ameliorate some of the manifestations of aging. A few comments on the paper. The mice were genetically modified so that the Yamanaka factors could be turned on with doxycycline. We would need to find another way of delivering the factors to the cell as this kind of modification is not possible in humans. The paper had no comment on whether the mice appeared younger or had a younger phenotype, which would have been interesting. When I saw the paper, I was hoping that the rejuvenation would have been across more tissues. But it is really good to see in vivo studies with wild type as opposed to prematurely aging mice and to see that the Yamanaka factors appeared safe and caused rejuvenation in skin as well as a younger looking serum profile.